Well, hello and uh, good day. It's right bang the smack of noon on a Saturday. And I want to welcome whoever is joining me today uh, in this very special national tutoring campaign that is brought to you by Africa Teen Geeks. And you can see on the slide there, uh, together with the Department of Education and some of our sponsors. And uh, welcome to the grade 11 students to information technology. I am Alistair Gabriel, I am your teacher, and this is the fifth session in the series. Um, I'm sure many of you, whilst you are not able or available to be part of the session today, this video um, is also going to be available to download, and perhaps you are watching it uh, long after we have recorded it during this time. If so, uh, I'm glad that you are with me and that you have chosen to uh, participate in this program. And we're trying to give you some assistance and some preparation towards the grade 11 information technology final exams, which uh, everybody uh, during, doing the course would be uh, facing at the end of this year. Okay, um, then I want to welcome my one student in the class today, Moza Rishaba. Uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit as the sh session progresses. Let me just get into the teaching for today, and uh, there will be a time for you to answer questions, and um, we'll unmute you at a later stage uh, when there is an opportunity for us to interact with each other. But for now, let's get into the lesson for today. Well, what are we looking at in the grade eleven uh, course today? Previously, we had looked into uh, character handling or also known as string manipulation. And this is and the presentations uh, looked into some functions that we use to manipulate strings. And that and, 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 and for those of you who uh, haven't uh, watched any of the previous videos, a string is a collection of characters, alphanumeric, so letters, alphabets, as well as all the special characters that you find on the keyboard, the colon, semicolon, the greater than sign, question mark, anything, all of those things together can be a string. Whilst we manipulated lots of numbers and decimal numbers in grade 10, there's a huge focus on strings in grade 11, and this continues into grade 12, so you must get this area right. If you are watching this video for the first time, so you'll notice that we'll be using some of the string functions that we studied in the previous four lessons as well. So it is assumed in this fifth session that you are already familiar with those. If you are not, as we are working with it, perhaps you might wanna play one of the earlier videos in order to familiarize yourself with those string functions. But nevertheless, by this time, uh, you should have also covered them in your school course. Today's lesson, of course, focuses on text files. So that also relates to character handling and string handling in the sense that um, because a text file is made up of text and text is just another word for string, we call it strings within the Delphi programming language and some other programming languages would call them strings, but other program language call it, te call it text and some files uh, and some other software refer to them as text. So they, they are two words that mean the same thing. Text is any set of characters from the 256 characters that we have available to choose from in the character set. So the question of course is what is a text file. Hmm? That's a nice place to start text files. Well, here is the answer. Firstly, it is a data structure. So it stores uh, a, a large volume of data and uh, the information can be stored permanently on a secondary storage medium. Now that's pretty important. There are two types of storage on a computer. We have the primary storage, which is part of the computer, and we refer to those mainly as the ROM and the RAM chips inside the machine. In grade 10, all we do is use the computer's RAM. Um, when we make variables, they are stored in the computer's RAM. So they're not permanent. When you, when you close Delphi, um, which is the programming language we are studying, all the, the memory is emptied and all those variables are lost. So it's a very temporary type of storage. Even when we when we store something called arrays, which you would have learned in the first half of this year in grade 11, uh, even an array gets stored in the RAM, which is the primary memory. So that is cleared when the program is closed. 
So we are looking at this stage of installing something more permanently. You will learn two data structures uh, that, that do permanent storage this year. This one is a text file and the other one is a database. So I'm not sure how far you've gotten in your school curriculum and when you've got to databases as yet. But today we're not talking about databases, we are talking about text files. So we can store a text file on the computer's hard drive, on any drive attached to the computer, even if you have a, a, a nice solid state drive, you can store it on that. You can even store it on a flash drive if you want. Um, you could even use a, 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 a CD or a DVD, although those are becoming very unpopular in the modern world. We are soon going to uh, be moving away from that type of storage. In fact, new computers don't even come with CDs and DVDs anymore. So any secondary storage device. Okay, it contains only ASCII characters and has no formatting. Now, what does this mean? In school, you might have been introduced to the ASCII characters. ASCII, you don't have to know what it stands for, but it does stand for American Standard Code for information interchange. And it contains the 256 acceptable characters for computing. So there's only actually 256. And so a text file contains can contain any of those 256 characters and nothing else. Therefore, there is no formatting. Formatting means changing the size of the font, um, maybe having colors, uh, putting blocks and arrows and shapes uh, and patterns in your, like what you can do with the word processor and Microsoft Word all sorts of fancy things, put things in bold. Text files cannot do any of that. So all of that is out. It contains just characters. And of course, the idea, you might think, oh, but that's silly. But the, the important part is that it's meant to be simple and it's meant to be portable so it can be easily moved around. And thirdly, it doesn't take a lot of space. Formatting and making things bold and adding color, those also increase the size of the file. So you can use Microsoft Word or other uh, word processors if you want more complex um, uh, types of storage of characters. But if we're looking for something simple and portable and small, that's when we use a text file. The extension is of a text file is .txt. And sometimes you can have other uh, text file extensions. Uh, if, if, if you have rich text formats, you'll have RTF, and sometimes you can have data files, which will have the extension .dat. But txt is the most common uh, way of recognizing a text file. And in Delphi, we use two components, either the t-memo or the t-rich edit to display and capture data for our text file. So, so in the syllabus, you will do two things. You will, you will use a text file that has already been created or you yourself can create a text file and you can store information into it. Okay, um, how do we create a text file? You can do it from within Delphi, although you will never be asked to create a text file in the exam because it takes it's, it's time wastage and there's, there's no real way to mark it. So you won't be asked to do that in the exam. In the exams, the text file will already be created for you. However, um, uh, what I was going to say that, yeah, uh, you can, but you can do it from Delphi and you will have to do a project at the end of this year and next year as well. So perhaps you'd need to learn how to create a text file from, from Delphi if you want to do it for your project, but it's not examinable. And this course is mainly preparing you for exams. You can use any word processor um, to do it. You can do it from Microsoft Word. Uh, if you wanted to, but we can also use Notepad and WordPad and any other things that can type and handle text. And of course, well, right, most word processors. All right, now I just want to look at some of the functions that we'll be using. And I, I know that you, you it may be getting too much to absorb right now, but we're also recording the session. So if you are playing this file after the recording, you can pause on the screen because what What's going to happen in this part of the presentation is we're going to use some uh, some commands and instructions, which are called procedures and functions in Delphi. And what we're going to do with these is we're going to write code with them. And uh, this screen shows you how they how they will work. So I'll introduce you to three that you will always see whenever we're working with a text file. Starting with this one, the assign file. Uh, we use this to actually set up our file. And when I'm going when I go into Delphi and we actually write up some code. We'll talk about the assigned file in more detail. Uh, but what you need to know is that you need to give two names to the assigned file instruction. One is the logical file name, 
and the other one is the physical file name. Now, if you look below on my screen here, where I've got the word VAR, you will see that that is the logical file name, meaning that we have to create, if you want to use a text file in Delphi, you have to create a text file variable. We usually use the name T file to mean text file. You can call it anything you like. Remember, this is your own variable, so the name is entirely up to you. But the data type, which you have never used before, is this data type. So there's a specific data type that we choose if we want to use a text file. We say of the type text file. So previously, you would have had colon integer or colon char or colon string or colon real uh, for any of the variables that you have made from grade 10 up until this point. But when you first use a text file, you will realize that you have to create a text file in the variable declaration statement. And this is known as the logical file name. Uh, the physical file name is the name of the text file that is that is actually stored on the secondary storage device or, the, or your disk, let's just say, we, we know we're gonna store it on a disk somewhere. So remember that file will also have a name. That is the, the, the physical file name. That's the meaning the actual name of the file, whoever created it and saved it and stored it. So this is how, um, if you look at the um, example there, you'll see this is how the assign file function is used. You say assign file, you give your logical file name, then you will have a comma, and notice important, the name of the text file must be in quotes. We're assuming in this example that the text file name is names.txt, and it's in open and close single quotes, and also, as with most Delphi, parameters, they are in round brackets. Okay, next slide. We also want to introduce you to two other procedures that we will use. And in fact, there's, there's three others. This slide is talking about the reset procedure. Let's have a look at it. This is the reset procedure. What is this uh, uh, used for? It's used to actually tell the computer that we want to open the file that we just assigned in the previous slide and we want to get it ready to use. Reset means I want to use the file. Uh, it's Well, not means that, but the idea behind using a reset is to open the file so that we can read the data from the file. Okay, then we will have um, the way in which an example, in our case, our logical file name is T file. So when we use the reset function, we'll say reset T file. Okay, then the end of file function. Now notice the reset is a procedure. So we just have to say reset and the parameter, but with the end of file function, it returns a result. What does EOF stand for? It actually stands for end of file. So you can actually determine whether or not you are at the end of the file. And how do we do that? We give the logical file name. You will see that we will, in our program, we're going to use it in a loop. We're going to use it in a while not end of file loop to see whether we are or are not at the end of the file. Um, and so you can see that because it's a function, we are using it together with another instruction. Here's the reset. It's being used by its own. It's just being called because it's a procedure. The end of file is a function. We can't just say end of file because it actually returns a result. End of file is asking the question, are we at the end of the file? And the answer is yes or no. And if you know about functions, uh, it returns this answer to the main program. So the program needs to do something with that answer. Why did you ask me if I'm at the end of the file? Yes or no? Now we are using it in a while loop, so um, that answer is meaningful. But we'll explain it a little bit more in detail uh, when we actually go to the code. Lastly, we must always close the file. Um, if you don't use this instruction, usually at the end of the program, um, firstly, nothing will happen. Nothing may not seem to go wrong your program will still work and it, you'll still use the file and it will still do everything that we that you wanted it to do. But it's always advisable to close files at the end when we are done with them. And the reason for that is uh, if we leave them open, then that file can be damaged by other files. When you run things on your computer, that file is still open and it's liable for uh, you know to be corrupted. This can also be open for virus attacks and all sorts of things. So uh, it may not happen, but it's always a good practice to close our files. Okay, so uh, let's ex exit the slide for now. Go into Delphi. 
and we want to actually write some code with a text file program. But before I actually begin the code, I'm going to check in with our student, Moza, and see at this point, um, after just running through the slides and explaining a few things, which may seem a little bit confusing, but don't worry. As we write the program, you will see that these things become more, will make more sense. So, uh, Moza, do you, would you like to ask anything? I'm just opening the session at this point. Uh, if you have any question regarding the slides that we have just had a look at. Uh, sir? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, I'm good so far. You're good. Okay. Yes. Uh, can I just ask you a question, Moza? Where, where are you from? From Bloemfontein. Okay, and uh, you're using your account, so your name is Moza? Yes. Okay, and um, what, uh, what school are you going to? So, so the secondary school. And uh, you're doing IT grade 11? Yes. Enjoying it? You, you, you enjoying the course? Yeah, so far, yes. You find it difficult? Nah, not really. You're okay. And uh, did you guys do text files in your class already? Yeah, yeah, we started doing text files uh, last week. So, oh, so it's pretty new. Yeah. Okay, good, good. So, yeah, because I'm also doing the beginning today. We're not going to go too far into it. I'm probably going to cover text files over the next two or three sessions. So, let's hope that this uh, is beneficial to you. Okay, I am going to mute you now and I'm going to continue um, with the class. And then again, even as I'm writing code for the buttons, I'll give you an opportunity to speak again or maybe ask a question as we go along. Thanks, Moza. All right, now we are going to look at some code. And let's start a little bit basic. And now let me show you what I've got on the interface at the moment. And I've, create, I've pre created it so that it, you know, we save time in the session because that 45 minutes goes pretty fast. And uh, so we want to cover a lot of code in the session. Now you'll see that I've got a rich edit here and I've left the name there on purpose so we can see the name. Remember also we always use, well, no, we should use the three letter prefix uh, to name our components. And this co component is reminding us that it's a RED, which is the short version or prefix for rich edit. And uh, we're going to use it to display uh, data from, in this case, our text file. So we usually call that T edit uh, R-E-E-D display. We have two buttons here. Um, original data is going to be the data from the text file, uh, the way it is actually in the text file itself. And formatted data is going to be, uh, we're going to format that. One of the uh, things they will test you on in the, in the exams is formatting. In other words, uh, displaying the information from the text file in a very neat way. So, um, even if we just get through original data today, uh, th that will be accomplishing something. Um, and we'll try to see if we can get to formatted data, but whatever we don't finish today, we will continue next week. Okay, now I just want to take you to this folder. Oh, okay, let's not worry about the folder. Let's just double click on the button. Now, in the exams, and I've been saying this throughout the campaign, uh, is you'll find that the buttons won't be named so much like how I've named them. In your exams, these things will have question numbers. So if, if text files and normally text files tend to be question two in the exam, the examiner would put 2.1 and 2.2 and 2.3 so that you know which buttons are for which questions. That's the idea behind it. You remember we always double click on a button to go into the code and I'm, I've done that now. And uh, let's just go to classic undocked so we can see uh, uh, a, a bigger screen for the code. Okay. Now we can see all the code right across the screen. And you can see that this button is called button original data, as you can see. And I'm using the three letter prefix that we normally use for a button called BTN. You will see that the procedure for this button has already been created. You didn't have to create it. In fact, the variable is also already done. And sometimes the, the examiner will do this, I'll create variables. Sometimes they won't. But the examiner has, in this case, created variables already for us. And usually there will be a comment. So I did take out the comment. And it will say, uh, write your code here. And just to remind you, if you have uh, two forward slashes like that, and the code appears in green, it's called a comment. 
And Delphi ignores that. It knows that is not an instruction. It is merely a comment for another person who is reading through the program. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to display, well, first we have to create a text file, right? So I've got Notepad. Oh, it's, uh, did I close it up? Oh, here we go. Let's just find Notepad. I seem to have closed my Notepad up. Uh, I want to just show you how you can actually create a text file for yourself. Um, I apologize. My machine is misbehaving again, being a bit slow. Here's Notepad. You can use Notepad. As I said in my slide, you could use Notepad. You could use WordPad. And you can even use your word processor, Microsoft Word, if you want to. OK, so let's create a text file now from scratch. Let's, let's write a silly thing, right? Let's say I, uh, no, let's write uh, the quick, just to, so we can see what we are loading into our program. Quick, brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Okay, let's just say this is our, that's our text file. Uh, we could put more things in it if we want to, but just, just leave this, uh, just because we don't want to waste time. And now I want to save it. Now, the reason I'm creating the text file is I want to show you how you can create your own text file. Secondly, I also need to teach you about where to save it. Now, remember, we've got a project already open. That project is called text file, the Delphi project that's open, right? Now, we want to save our text file in the same folder where our project is. So I'm going to go to save. And I'm going to show you that you need to find on your hard drive. Now, yours will be different from mine, right? We need to, you see, I've opened, my computer has opened the desktop. Now, I've got a folder called ATG. When you open that, you'll find a folder called the tuition campaign. And this is session five. And in the session five, you will find a folder called text file. And you can see this is where uh, my Delphi program is stored. So this is how you navigate to where your Delphi program is, the one that you're gonna to use to connect the text files. Remember, you must always save your Delphi program in a folder and it's in this, uh, this text file folder. You can see I've already got some other text files here because we're gonna use these text files throughout this course with text files. And I've created some in advance. Again, I don't wanna waste time in the course typing information in the text file. I have typed one out now, the quick brown fox one, but that's just to demonstrate how we could actually use a text file. Now, if you look at the saving, you'll see that because we are using Notepad, Notepad automatically picks up the extension, like I said in the slides, as a text file. So it's already got the extension TXT. Leave that there and give your file uh, a name. Let's just call this file uh, testing because we're just using it to test whether our text file code is working. That's right? so all we need to remember that name and it's stored here under testing. So let's click the save button. And that is now, now saved. Now I want to also navigate to that folder for you. Let's go to desktop. Uh, I'm now using Windows to navigate to that folder, tuition campaign, session five, and text file. Now you can see this is all my Delphi files. Can you see all these files here? You should be a grade 11 familiar with these. This is the project file, the one that will run the program. This is our interface. Um, our interface name. There's all my text files that I've got there. And here's the one we made now. Testing, can you see the date? Made on the 11th of the ninth month, 12, 27. That was just like a minute ago. So that's the file that we've used. You can see these are older files created in August. Uh, so that is our text file that we want to use. So let's close this window. And if you go one back, you will see that everything is in this folder called text file. So I'm saying this because some students, and I have grade 10 and 11 students that still don't save their work properly. They don't save in folders. They have it dumped out all over the hard drive and it's very difficult to find uh, the programs when we need to work with them. Okay, I'm gonna close the text file now. Um, I had hope opened another one by accident there. All right, now we wanna write some code to connect to that text file, right? Now, before we write any, I know I said things about a sign file, and, and, and reset and so on. But if all you want to do is dump the entire text file onto your screen, we don't need to use any of those functions. The, uh, the, the t-edit, sorry, not the t-edit, the rich edit and the memo both have a special function to just um, 
find the text file and dump the information. You have no control over it. You can't um, display it in your own way. You can't do any formatting though. But uh, there may be some instances where you just might want to do that. For example, maybe it's a hell file. Like maybe you're making writing a game and you've got some instructions there and you just want to pop the whole text file into your Delphi window. And you don't want to fiddle with that or anything. It's all just set up perfectly to be able to be read by somebody. In that case, you want to use uh, this instruction. Now, I'm going to use RED, control spacebar for the shortcut so we can get the name of the component. Um, and my computer is being so slow about it. So let's rather just type it. RED display was the name of that variable, right? And you'll remember these instructions, we always say dot lines. And then we normally say dot lines dot add, right? I think you might be familiar with how a rich edit works. Dot, dot lines dot add is how we usually add a line to uh, a rich edit, but I'm going to use a different one today. If you type LO, you'll see, you'll have something called load from file. And the load from file is actually instructing the, the T-edit to go to a file and load the lines from that particular file. So you're not gonna add them manually. You are simply going to uh, load them from the text file. And we, of course, have to give the name of our text file. And our text file's name was, Oh, now I forgot. Did we say testing or did we say tester? I think I said testing dot txt. And you're going to put it in quotes, open quotes, testing with the, with the extension. Delphi might not find the file if you don't put the extension. And that is our uh, testing file. Okay, so let's save everything. And let's run the play button. Okay, and our program is now running. It's going to display that interface on the screen. Let's just wait for that to appear. Here we go. And now that's our original data button where we read that code. Let's press the button. And now you can see it's displaying the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog, which you remember is what we typed into the text file. So um, you can see with one line, you can simply uh, uh display the data from the text file okay pretty simple so in future if you ever just want to take text files and put them into your delphi program it's all done in a single line now what we are going to do i'm going to block this off because that's not really what we want to do today i'm going to take you to a text file that i have pre-prepared and let me let me navigate to that file again and while it's opening we're going to talk about something called a CSV text file. I need to go to desktop, ATG, uh, tuition campaign, session five, text file. I need to leave this open. All right, I'm going to look at this file called names. Okay, let's look at this file called, called names. Let's open it and have a look at what's there. So there's names of some people, and there's five lines in the file. There's a, there's a funny one with X's all at the end, but there's five lines in this text file, right? This text file is called names. So look at the file you'll see that each line in the text file um, has three significant pieces of data, not just one big text file like the quick uh, brown fox jumped over the moon and whatever, lazy dog, and, and it's all just uh, one big file. But here we've got one line that actually means there's three pieces of information that we, we might want in the text file. Um, and it's preset what they are. You won't know, but let me tell you what they are. The first one is the person's name. So the name of the first one is Mandisa. The second is a number, and that number is the age of the person. So Mandisa is 16 years old. And the, the third field, I think you can pretty much figure out what that is. That is telling you whether or not the person is a male or a female. So there's three pieces of information on the file. Okay, and then we've got Ndkozo who's 17 and so on. So um, my apologies there, my phone rang. Uh, so uh, what's happening here now is you've got these uh, bits of information and each, each piece of information is, is important. Now, if we do, let's just display this text file, right? Let's, it's called names.txt as you can see. 
And let's change, let's change our display in our file. And we've got names. So now we can change it to names. You'll see that it was in the same folder as the uh, a file that we use with the quick brown fox. So it should pick it up with no problems. And we click original data. And now you can see that entire thing is appearing on the screen, that text file that I just showed you right now. OK, so let's minimize this. OK, now, before we proceed, uh, I've forgotten to tell you one thing. The reason we put the text file in that folder is so that we can just put its name when we are uh, using any uh, instructions to open the file. Remember, the computer will have to, if it's not in that folder, which is called the default folder, you will actually have to put a path there uh, to so that the computer can, so that Delphi can find your file. You'll have to say C drive slash uh, desktop slash and, oh, and keep going with the folders until you get to the text file. So can you see, you, it's a long thing you'll have to type in there. So that's, we can avoid all of that if we make sure that our text file is in the same folder as the Delphi program is in. Okay, so you can see now we can just take any text file and we can just pop it into the program using this. But what, what's happening? We are just dumping all the information into the, into the window and it's there with the hashes and everything. Okay, let's just go and have another look at it. Can you see? It's there with the hashes and it looks pretty untidy and we have no control over everything. So what we really wanna do, what we really wanna do is we wanna, we wanna display the information in a very formatted way, in a very organized way, so that we can separate anything. So um, that is where our controls come in. That is where using um, uh, our, all our instructions, the assign file and all of those things, that together with all the character handling functions that we did, that's when that becomes pretty useful, right? So we're gonna leave this as our original file. That's why I got that button. We can always see, sometimes we, if our program is making mistakes, we can always press that button to see what's in the text file to see whether everything is going right. So let's go back to design and let's go back to formatted data. So we are, we are gonna get a chance to look at the formatted data. And uh, so what we're gonna do now is we are gonna connect to this text file in a much more organized way so that we can not dump the whole text file onto the screen, but so that we can read it or use it one line at a time. So we have a second button for that. Now let's quickly look at the variables that we have. We have the file F, uh, well, uh, I didn't call it T file this time, I called it F name file. So we can, uh, we know that the, that the, the file has names in it. Uh, sometimes we, we use the name of the text file uh, to be something which, which is just the name of the file, which gives us a clue as to what the file is about. So if I just put T file for everything, you saw I had three different text files there. So if I keep using T file and I don't know which file we are talking about, now I know I'm talking about the names and, and we can just call it uh, anything we like, but name is good. So F name file, that's my file for all the names. There's some other string variables that I created there. We'll talk about uh, them as we go. And you'll see there is an uh, a, 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 I, a pos variable, remember it's, uh, we're putting the letter I in front of it because it's an integer. That's the, also the standard naming strategy for Delphi. And so this is our um, button for writing the code. So let's first use the assign file function. Remember how we had it in the slide, we said assign file and let's, we had our logical file name there, which in this case is F uh, name file. There we go, control spacebar gives you the shortcut so you can find the names of the file. And the next thing we wanna do is we wanna put the physical file name, which we said was names.txt. And now you can see we have successfully used a assigned file function. Then we're gonna use our reset function. The reset tells the computer to open the file and get ready to put data into the file. And all the reset is it's a procedure. Both assign file and reset are procedures. They just do stuff. Assign file will look for the file. Reset will open the file. Okay, then let's put our close all one time. This is generally how I like to program. So everything is all set. 
And so we've got the closed function there. And then I go up and I press enter and I leave some space there. And now I'm all ready with the file. These three things you'll always need to have. The assign and the reset together will carry one mark when you do it correctly. Um, and sometimes the closed file will carry a mark when, um, depending on how the exam is set. But these three things are quite important. And then we're going to start writing code to access this particular file. Okay, so let's, we've got about six minutes to go. So let's try and see if we can squeeze something in. At the same time, I don't want to confuse everybody, but let's show you how we are going to go to the text file. Now, now, there's names in the text file. How many names there were? There were five, but we don't know that there's five. We could simply at any point add another name to the file with the age and gender and everything, okay? So we have the first challenge. If we're gonna go through the text file and the idea is we wanna go through it line by line. We wanna display the text file. We don't wanna dump the whole thing on the screen like we did in the previous button. We wanna do it line by line. So we will use uh, the end of file function. That's what it's for. The end of file function can keep going line by line through a text file and we can keep asking the computer, are you at the end of, of the file? And it can tell us yes or no. So we use this loop here while, and again, as much as we don't like you to just memorize things, um, you can memorize this loop because this is the standard way in which we run through an entire text file. Our logical file name, remember if you remember the slides, we always put the logical file name into the instructions. The only time you'll see the physical file name is in the assign file line, the first line. After that, everything is the logical file name. So we can say do begin. Here's our while loop. So this while loop will keep running until it's at the end of the file. You can see, as long as you're not, while you are not at the end of the file, do the following. Take the data out, display it on screen, and, uh, and, 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 and then we can see the entire file. So we're doing the same thing that the button previously is doing. In the end, you'll just see all the data on the screen. But this time, we have a lot more control of it because we can do it. We're going to be doing it one line at a time. Um, and then, of course, we'll show you how, if we can do it one line at a time, we can, we can actually do more control within that line as well. That's what we're leading up to as the sessions go on. But I do see that I'm really close to uh, the end of the session. And what I do want to do, and I'm going to save this for now. Uh, let's click Save. This button uh, is not going to function right now because I, in four minutes, I don't want to whiz quickly through how to display the data on the screen. Uh, I'm gonna pick that up next week. And so just keep note of this file. We're gonna come back to this very spot in the program as we continue with text files in our next session, which is session six in the campaign. But at this point in time, um, I'm going to also open the um, um, flow for any further questions uh, that uh, students may have. Uh, I don't know, Moza, um, did you manage to follow everything? I hope I didn't confuse you anywhere. But if you have a question, um, I'm, I'm happy to answer it at this point in time. In the last few minutes that we have, um, I'm, I'm more um, hoping to try to help you with anything that you might be confused with or answer any question that you might ask. Over to you, Moza. Hello, sir. Yes, Moza. How are you doing so uh, far? I think I'm fine so far. OK. Any, do you have any question? Yes, but uh, it is not related to um, text files. It, it is about uh, my Delphi IDE. Your your IDE. Yeah, Delphi IDE. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Maybe I can answer that question. Before we get to that, let me just make sure you are comfortable with everything. You 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 followed everything we did so far here. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Um, and in your class, did you get as far as uh, what I've been just doing now with the with the while not end of file and the loop and everything? Have you got to this stage yet, or you haven't come today to that point yet? Um, we have. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So some of it is familiar to you. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay, then that's good. Okay, keep at it. What's the? How can I help you with your ID question? I'm not sure if I can, but let's try. Um, so uh, if it, if it, if it, if I try to like run my, my programs. Yes. LS52039. That's like the name of the error or something. 
So I can't like run my programs. What happens? What? Uh, okay, I don't. I don't know all the error numbers, but uh, can you remember what the error is saying? Um. Yes, I, th I think so. It keeps on saying 